Hey, hey, until somebody tells me you're on this case, Lazaro, you touch nothing. Okay, you're the first to know I'm on this case, and not only that, I'm running it. Who says? Nardino says I'm on the case, I say I'm running it. I'm not happy about this either, Gresham, but that's the way it is. Relax. Oh, boy. We'll see about this. It's just like you, Colt, to step all over your prize evidence. Pick this rose up and match it against the others. Go over it good for fiber, hair, skin, anything and everything. What are you doing here? Nandino sent me. It's my case now, Colt. The hell it is. I got this under control. She's number four. Four women thrown out of their high-rise windows doesn't sound like much is under control. Colton. Yeah. Uh, 14 karat white gold charm bracelet. Sells at $120 at Tiffany's. A popular item. Can't trace the buyer. Just like the rose, it's a signature. Keep it from the press. This isn't gonna work. It doesn't have to. I always like working alone. everywhere, Meg, and it's just a matter of time before, you know, I can't even say it. All this policing is still too late. Be a joke if more so sad. That's why I enrolled in the self-defense class. We'll have a feeling we're on our own in this one. Nine stories. I, I just can't imagine what that'd be like. Wonder if she screamed. What? Nothing. Evening, Mrs. Stringer. Off to your poetry class? Yes, my dear. Food for the soul. <laughs> Good night, Meg. Good night. In. I, I fell asleep waiting for you. Are you okay? I could have killed you. Look, you're not supposed to be here. I know. I'm sorry. I should have called. I'm sorry. Greg, we are not together anymore. You can't just come over here whenever you feel like you shouldn't even have that key anymore. You're right. I'm sorry. It was the wrong thing to do. Look, I want us to be friends, but we've been through this. 
I miss you. Don't make this harder than it has to be. I don't want to have to ask you to leave. Hey, here it is. Henry Sadowski lives over in West 70. I guess he went out with her for a while until she dumped him for some other guy. Friends say he's pretty weird. A real piece of work. What's his old boyfriend got to do with this? Are we to believe that he was involved with the other three as well? It's a lead. Yeah? Well, I suppose you got something better, right? Is that what you're trying to say to me? Yeah. Excuse okay. me for interrupting. The city would appreciate if the two of you would temporarily shelve your personalities and prioritize this case. I talked to the chief. Let me straighten this out for you. You're both on the case. Listen, sir, I really don't think... Colton, your star shines bright since the Bontelera raid. But you're new to homicide. This case is ugly. Hey, if I'm the designated fall guy, why don't I go this alone, sir? Bizarro. What happened with the Sunrise Strangler is not that far behind you. I know that no matter what happens, Colton won't fold. What he lacks in experience, he makes up for instability. Between the two of you, you make a hell of a cop. That'll be all. You are dismissed. The city sleeps with an open eye, perhaps more vigilant than ever. For on this evening, we must report yet another in a seemingly endless string of serial murders. Another young woman, the fourth, has been hurled out of her high-rise apartment, plummeting into the night to a horrible death. The police have little to say except that the suspect picks only blonde women and throws them out of windows of high-rises. No one can other than these few facts, the police are keeping a tight lid on information available to us. Police have secured the area. Some serial killing is taking place. You're always unhappy, but you look unhappy tonight. You came here to cheer up, but you never come to these kinds of places. I can tell by the way you are gripping the wine glass. You look like you're riding on a subway. Well, there you are all glum, and it just seems so pointless. All these happy people to the left of you, to the right of you. Happy, happy, happy people everywhere. But nobody knows you're there. But you did. Uh, yes, that's because I'm unhappy too, just like you. Sad but true, we're meant for each other. Who are you? I am... Paul. What are you? A miserable person. I'm Meg. Meg. Another I'm miserable person. <laughs> and you're restless, aren't you? Aren't you? Well, I have the perfect antidote. Adventure. Hello, room service. I'd like to have dessert sent up to room 785, please. Uh, we'll have one creme brulee, a piece of chocolate cake. With vanilla ice cream. But with vanilla ice cream and two cappuccinos. Oh, and do me a favor. Could you just leave it outside the door, please? We don't wish to be disturbed. Thank you. You 
You're not gonna stiff this guy, are you? Well, it's not an adventure if we pay. Excuse me. You dropped 20 bucks. It's yours. This is beautiful. Yeah. Do you think anyone's watching us? I never knew my father. My mother died when I was young. I'm sorry. That must have been very hard. Well, who can say they had a perfect childhood? Say that again. The truth is, I kind of miss being a kid. Come with me. Where are we going? Come with me. Watch your step. <gasps> What are you doing? Don't worry. I've lived on the edge so long, I've just about made friends with it. Come down. When you were a kid, did you dream you could fly? I did. I still do. Come on, take my hand. on our speed dial. Sure, I dated Rebecca. A couple months ago. Why did it end? Hey, I don't know. She'd seen some jerk inside. Um, turned out she liked him better, I guess. Henry. Henry. You're being violent with her, Henry. Hey, I didn't hurt her. I loved her. We'll call you if we have any further questions. You can go now.
Fox. Tell me everything. I want details. She kept her head, she tucked, she dropped, and she ran. That's what you want to do. Run and survive. Anybody else want to try? Hey, Meg, why don't you try? You could save your life. I'm just here to watch, remember? She's right. Give it a try. I really don't think it's a good idea. Meg, he's not really going to hurt you. It's just practice. Just try it. Come on, it'll be fun. said he was all right. He just didn't expect it. Neither did I. I don't even know why I let you drag me to that class in the first place. I can take care of myself. Well, I'm sorry. I just thought a self-defense class would have been a good idea, especially with everything that's going on. I scared myself. I could have killed him. Well, you didn't, okay? So? So? Again, it appears that another young woman has been pushed to her death from her apartment window. A tragic event that will only escalate our city's growing sense of outrage and panic. We're looking at a ritual killer, obsessive, doing what he needs to do, reenacting something, some kind of past trauma. You look worried. <laughs> I thought that... You need to learn to trust someone. Come on. Meg! I thought it was you. Greg, what are you doing here? Oh, I'm just going in for a drink. Listen, I'm glad I ran into you. I feel really badly about the other day. You know, the last thing I meant to do was hurt you. Paul, this is my friend Greg. Is this you? Say, did you get that gift I sent you? Look, Meg and I were just gonna go... Oh, don't rush off. Now join me for a drink. Uh, look, it's clear that you two have some things to straighten out. Good night, Meg. Did I say something wrong? He's a really nice guy. He's just having trouble accepting the fact that we're over. I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. He seems like he really cares for you. There's nothing going on between us anymore. I promise. So where do you want to go? Let's go downtown. See what happens. I'm sure there's a place with people more miserable than us. Pain, my pain, my pain. Could we have tried any harder? What more could we have gained? I mean, 
never reproach you again. <laughs> Ever. She's my neighbor. There was a young man from Nantucket. the Sunrise Strangler case could have happened to anybody. Okay? Truce? Sure. I just think it was luck of the draw. A witness died because I missed the beat. It was my case. I missed the beat. From where I sit, I don't think luck has much to do with it. But for the record, I don't believe what they said. Believe what you want. Hey, just let my feeble little mind try to put some words together, all right? I don't think you set the witness up as bait. I just don't believe you did. Why? Because. If you'd planned it, you would have done something other than fall apart. You, you would have gotten meaner, not weaker. I don't think it was bad luck. Bingo. This is all wrong. The whole place is wrong. There's not one blonde in this place. Besides, this is punk. All of our women have been professionals. Upscale. I get a divorce. <laughs> That's true. Here's to you, kid. My life is but a speck of dust, wavering in the wind. 
You cradle me with your love and keep me safe. Who can say we've sinned? Well, I, uh, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Are you always this nervous? <laughs> actually, I'm just uh, distracted. Well, maybe I can help. Let's cut to the chase. We're seasoned veterans, aren't we? And let's the new recruits waste their lives, tentative and afraid. The guy with the blonde, what's he drinking? Why? Because I want to know. Look, it is obvious he's over 21, okay? Why is nothing easy? Just tell me what he's drinking. Same thing as always. Mineral water on a martini glass for himself, a tequila shooter for the lady. I have seen him do that a lot. <laughs> Loses up the ladies. You seem like the kind of man who seeks balance, a sense of equanimity. <laughs> I put up a good front. Why are you smiling? I, you, I find myself aroused by good vocabulary. I looked out through my veil and I, I thought I could see my whole life ahead of me. For that moment, just that moment, I was uh, part of a perfect myth. It was exquisite to believe like that. However, Thank you very much. anyway, sorry. I, I uh, God, I rattle on sometimes, don't no, I? No, 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 I heard every word. Uh, I, uh, I have to go now. your ghost and I. Good work, Colton. Oh. This is my attempt at poetry. Oh, this is amazing. I had no idea.
was thinking about what you said the other night about how you said you made peace with living on the edge. How the fall wouldn't scare you. Maybe it's time I let someone pull me in. Into something safe. I make you feel safe. I never thought anything good. Paperwork. All right, so I made a mistake. People make mistakes. It's a bad luck. Yeah, every other word out of your mouth is luck. Well, rumor has it that the bat and raid was a lucky accident. Yeah? What'd you hear? You were in the industrial park picking up a coffee table that your wife had refinished. So what? Louis Pasteur said chance favors the prepared mind. And the reason you saw the back room was because you wanted to call your wife to tell her there was a big drip on one of the legs. <laughs> I got the commendation. You don't... It must be quite a weight on your shoulder to be the smartest guy in every room. Not right now, Colton. I'm afraid it is. Oh. Go ahead and hit it. Go on, hit it.
that I gave you. She was right about all of you, wasn't she? All of you. Paul, what are you doing? You're scaring me. Dr. Murphy, I'm a neurologist. I'm going to look after you. Mm. I don't know anything about him. I just know that she was happy. Or she seemed happy. Dr. Chan and Dr. Allen. Dr. Murphy? Yes? Lieutenant Lazar. Yes, Lieutenant. Dr. Murphy, you've got to talk to me. Uh-huh. I have to interview her as soon as possible. She's the only witness I've got. Lieutenant, right now, she wouldn't be able to tell you her own name. I mean, she hasn't had an actual skull fracture, but she's got one heck of a concussion. So, frankly, it's out of my hands. You're just going to have to wait. Paging Dr. Gelfand. Dr. Gelfand to maternity. 
She'd been seeing him for about two weeks. What's his name? Paul something. What did he look like? I don't know. He was, uh... He was a handsome guy, I guess. You think you could describe him to a police artist? Maybe. Look, I didn't really get a good look at him. What about you and Meg? We're friends. Sounded like you were pretty upset on her answering machine. Sounded like you wanted more. I was worried about her. Yeah. People do the damnedest things when they're jealous, don't they? <laughs> I, I didn't do anything. Who said you did? Where were you last night, Greg? Here. In bed. Alone. Can you tell me your name? Meg. Crane. Good. Can't you remember what happened? Meg, can you remember what happened just before you fell? I, I was at a Halloween party with my friend, Betsy. Okay, that's all for now. You get some rest. Halloween was over three weeks ago. Oh, well, she has memory loss, okay? I mean, it's pretty common in cases like this. You get a severe trauma to the head, things get scrambled. And it's stuff from the recent past that doesn't get retrieved. The attack, her ability as a witness? Those events are buried deep inside her mind someplace, but we can't access it. Prognosis? I can't tell you that. I don't know. We don't know that much about memory. We don't know how it's stored, how it's retrieved. Symptoms like this could linger for quite some time. And she may never remember. Those are beautiful. I grew them myself. Not easy when the weather is this cold. Lieutenant Frank Lazaro, can I take you for a walk? Look for another view? If you're up to it, I'd like for us to talk. If it's just the same to you, I think I'd rather be alone. We've got a lot to discuss. First, you being a witness. I don't remember anything. Okay. I still we need your help. The press is clamoring to talk to you. I'd read rather that you don't let that happen. The day I take orders from you, Lieutenant, is the day I join the force. Listen, I'm just looking for a little cooperation. What does it matter what I think? You're going to do what you want anyway. Now maybe you need to rest. I'll come back another time. I wish you wouldn't. <laughs> Did anybody ever teach you that cops are the good guys? What is the matter with you? you know, I just like to get things clear. Are you behaving this way because you can't remember, because your head hurts, or because you don't like me? Meg, there's a very, very dangerous man out there, and you can help. Uh, if you change your mind or your mind changes or however it goes, uh, call me. Paging Dr. Smith, Dr. Smith to maternity. Dr. James to maternity. Dr. James to maternity. They're called Sterling Silver Roses. Following the class of hybrid tea, they were hybridized by Gladys Fisher in 1957, distributed by Jackson and Perkins. The bud is long and tapered. The mature flower is of medium size, about three and a half inches in diameter. They're lavender by day, none of the moonlight. They look silver. You ever play team sports in your kid? Never. It shows. Meg Crane isn't leveling with us. Patronize me, oh great one, please. Tell me why. Well, she was nasty, put off, caustic, noxious. All because I told her I was a cop. Oh, you think she reacted that way because of your profession? I'm gonna find out about that little girl. A homicide, Colton. Yeah? Yeah? 
Uh huh. Okay. I know something you don't. Mm. Meg Crane is talking to a reporter at the hospital right now. What the hell have you done? You just may have cost us this case. I don't think it's any of your business. Is this your chance for a little fame? Get out. Excuse me. I'm Tim Colton. We're partners. I'm civilized. He's not. Can we talk? No. Listen, I think it was very brave of you to try and warn other women. This is a very big case. The police like to believe they control what's fed to the media. Well, I don't think that's my problem. Who sent you these? I don't know. They came without a card. Now, if you will both please leave, I'm tired. I'll go all the way to Nardino on this. I want this girl under 24-hour surveillance. Fine, undercover stakeout. Forget it. I want a uniformed cop with a big gun, plain as day. I'm not taking any chances what on this. What are you talking about? What chances? I don't like this. If anybody should know better, it should be you. What do you say? She's bait? I want to set her up? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. I want her under 24-hour surveillance, plain as day. I'm fooling around on this. crazy for coming back here. I'm crazy for a lot of things. <laughs> so good to have you back. Oh, good to be back. Yes, I promise. Now go. Okay, call me. Okay.
She's hiding something. She's doing a hell of a job. There's nothing on this woman. Tax returns, school, work history. She's as run of the mill as it comes. Nothing stands out. Clean and boring. She's being guarded. Not well enough. And we should pack her up and take her out of state. Nope. There's more to her than we know. She wants this. She's ready for it. Mean and boring Meg Crane. Who are you? every time. Thank you. Pleasure. You just keep checking on it for me, okay? Now, what do you got? I'll talk to you later. Well, her real name isn't Meg Crane. It's uh, Norma Markham. Uh-huh, yeah. What else? Is your father died when she was two? Mm -hmm. Mother died when she was nine. Doesn't say anything about foster care. Look at that. Oh. Well, she's got life insurance. And one beneficiary, uh, the Children's Defense League. That's weird, isn't it? Mm. A 23 year old with life insurance? Hmm. Well, the more we know about her, the closer we get to him. Yes? Did I tell you about the most gorgeous guy that's up in men's room right now? No. His name is Nick. I don't know, I just, I can't control myself. It's like clockwork. Every time I see him stacking those jockey shorts, <laughs> I just go out of my mind. I don't know, do you think I should reprioritize my social life? I... Betsy, do I know that guy back there? Or the blue? <laughs> well, if you do, why haven't you introduced me? He's cute. And I'm fickle. He lives below me. Yeah, I saw him the other day. Looks like I know him. Tell everyone I said hi. All right, and be careful. Watch her. Bet you can't keep up with me.
Something's been acting up lately. We'll have to call the super. Eric. Eric Overton. I just moved into 8C. 8C? Isn't that where Mrs. Stringer lives? Yes, that's right. I'm her nephew. She actually just moved to San Francisco. Really? Yeah. Ferling, Getty, Ginsburg, these voices beckon. I suspect she's browsing through city lights as we speak. Mm. Well, I didn't get a chance to say goodbye. I can send you regards. Okay, thanks. It's funny how it worked out. She was in such a hurry to leave. I was looking for a place. It worked out perfectly. I had no idea. Take this. I'm sure she would have wanted you to have it. Robert Frost. You like poetry? I bet you do. Yes, I do. How did you know? <sighs> Not the most relaxing ride. I get the strangest feeling like we've met someplace before. I was thinking the same thing. Maybe it was another life. Take care. Your brain is not dented. Like this. I feel like I've seen this before. This painting. Maybe you have. I've seen this. You poor person. You're haunted by an ugly painting. Come on. <laughs> by Robert Frost. Do you mind if I sit down? I'm worried about the road you've chosen. It's gonna cost somebody their life, maybe your own. Norma Markham. You were a little girl, all of nine years old. You lived alone with your mother. and Your father died when you were only two. I know the story, Lieutenant. Yeah, but you left me to run around and figure it out. So bear with me. Your mother was followed, harassed by some guy, an ex-lover maybe, I don't know. Things were different then. Nobody paid much attention to a woman's cries for help. The police couldn't be bothered. Couldn't be bothered? 
He was one of them. He was a cop. They knew he was bad. They were probably taking bets on what he'd do. It was wrong. And there's no excuse for it. Saying that doesn't make any difference. It's a different world now. And I know I've been a nuisance to you. But we need your help. Shoes on the other foot. Yes, it is. And I know you want revenge for what happened to your mother, but it's too late. He broke down our door. He raped her, and then he killed her. And I saw it all. Meg, I know what it is to hang on to something so ugly that it rots you from inside out. Nothing good comes from it. He'll try to kill me again, won't he? Yes, I think he will. I hope he tries. I've gone this way before. The price is too much for everybody. But I'm telling you, this is different. You've been warned. Even if I wanted to help you, I can't. Yeah. Yeah. It's me, Greg. Could you open the door? I'm... Look, I've been worried about you. You haven't returned my phone calls. Look, Greg, I just feel like being alone. Come on, Meg. Open up. Meg, don't lock me out like this. You shouldn't be alone after what's happened. Meg. Okay, I'll try to understand. I'll, I'll go, Meg, if that's what you want. But if you change your mind, if you want to talk, I'm here for you. Greg? Yeah? I'm Eric Overton. I live in the next building. That's a lot closer than I'll ever get. Yeah. I happen to see you standing outside the door. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I know how you feel. She's making you crazy, right? Something like that. I'm, I'm sorry, you look really familiar. Have we met? No, I can safely say we've never met. Well, it must be one of those deja vu things. You know? They say it's a chemical in your brain. No, I know you. I, I remember. You used to have glasses, right? Yeah, I, I saw you and Meg the other night. You and Meg were outside. It wasn't me, believe me. I wish it was. Oh, yeah, but no, it wasn't me. You want a drink? Oh. I'm fine, I'm drinking. Good. What's in there? Morning jog, I see. Guess the clothes keep away. Mm -hmm. You're like clockwork every morning, 8.30 on the dot. A lot of discipline. So, how's the recovery going? Good. There are advantages to having a thick skull. <laughs> Guess you're right. I work at home, so if you ever feel like company... Yeah? Look, don't be shy, okay? 
Nice shoes. I'm ready for you, Miss Crane. Tony? Can we relax now? I found some newspaper clippings about the killings, some victims' photos, a couple of matchbooks and bars you picked them up in. Looks like it's all here. Good. This is good. Because you guys were having a hard time making a stick with him. At least he ended it before anybody else got hurt. You don't, uh, look so happy. My mental illness prevents me from crying out in ecstasy. You know what I mean. He left no note. I don't buy it. I don't think this guy killed anybody, including himself. What can I do for you, Lieutenant? There's been a new development in the case. I'm sorry to have to tell you this. But Greg March committed suicide this morning. What? It appears from the evidence we found in his apartment that he was the killer. Why doesn't it? Because he... He was just a sweet, mixed up guy. Is that just a feeling you have? Nothing you might want to talk about? No. Nothing else to say? It would be a pity if, um... Greg March went to his grave, a serial killer. Especially if you knew different. If something comes to me, I'll let you know. Huh. Oh, uh, I've been ordered to pull your 24-hour protection. Um, is there any reason why I shouldn't?
I hope I'm not bothering you. No, no, not at all. I'd invite you in, but I'm ashamed of my housekeeping. <laughs> well, that's okay. I'm unannounced. Pretty cliche, isn't it? Uh, the slob bachelor thing. <laughs> well, actually, I went out with a guy once who let the globs of toothpaste build up so much on his bathroom sink it sort of looked like a mound. You're a very forgiving person. <laughs> actually, I left him. See, I'm right not to let you in. <laughs> Look, I'm going a little stir-crazy today, and I was wondering if you'd want to go out tonight. Out? Like a date out? Yeah, like a date. Seem sad. I'm sorry. No, I just got some bad news today, but I'm fine. Do you read restaurant reviews? No. Well, picky people write them, but there is a place on East 8th that got an A+. Maybe because it stands for ambulance. <laughs> I found this the other day. What do you think? Oh. Doesn't do much for me. Why you like it? I don't know. I, I get this strange feeling that I've seen it before. It should mean something to me. Well, it's probably famous. Uh, you might see it in a photo. I don't think so. Easy. Let's go. I can't believe you're just gonna pack up like this is over. The case is officially closed, okay? No, you know, it's not okay. I mean, it's obvious we're missing something. Well, maybe it's just wrong. Maybe old Greg, the serial killer, just has strung himself up because he couldn't live with himself anymore. I don't know. No. When it comes to your brain, you're the most arrogant son of a bitch I've ever met. You know you're right. And you know this case isn't over. And you're just giving up because you're scared. Think of a more perfect way to celebrate. Celebrate what? They found him, the killer. I'm free. Really? Come with me.
supposed to be, Eric? I have called this station three times, and there doesn't seem to be a way to get anybody's attention. I'd like to report a missing person. Fill that out. Has to be gone at least 72 hours. You act like this is of no consequence. Where is the humanity? All right. All right. What's her name? Mrs. Eugene Stringer. She attends a poetry recital every week. Last week, she missed a retrospective of Robert Frost. So what? Robert Frost was her favorite poet. She was passionate about his work. It wasn't something she would miss. Robert Frost. What was her name again? Uh, Mrs. Stringer. Mrs. Eugene Stringer. What was her address? Oh, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I believe she lived on the east side. Stringer. Hello, Paul. Welcome back. You're probably feeling a little anxious by now. Relax. It'll all be over soon. Now it's your turn. You knew all along. I was wrong about one thing. You are different than the others. You don't know how it feels, Paul. Falling through space. The whole world spinning while you count the seconds. You can't shoot me. It's not that easy to kill someone. Especially someone you love. I know you love me. I see it in your eyes. I felt it when we kissed. A part of me still knows how to love. I felt that for you. Don't move. You want to heal, don't you, Meg? You want to be whole. Isn't that what drives us both? If you pull that trigger, there's no turning back. <laughs> You're making this very difficult. Hold it right there. Put it down. Put it down. Turn around. Turn around. Hands in the air. Now! Now.
Gotta hand it to you. For for you, Meg would be. I think you're a really good cop. I'm just a little jealous. <laughs> Colton, Meg Crane isn't alive because my IQ's off the charts. She's alive because my partner wouldn't settle for anything less. Not to mention a little luck. beginning to believe in second chances. What do you say, kid? It's not that easy. I fell in love with a man and he turned on me. Sometimes it's hard to see the danger in things until it's too late. I speak from experience. I just want to leave it behind me. Move forward. Good idea. 